Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about a book which covers the way history is portrayed in feature films. Now history is a very popular subject, whether it is um, the colonization, exploration, wars, invasions, um, biographical histories of things like royalty, um, famous figures, politicians, uh, and so on. Uh, it's always been a very uh, popular subject. Um, but unfortunately, uh, the movies take terrible liberties with history. And this can be a problem if your only source of the historical narrative is from a movie. That becomes the truth as far as you're concerned. And uh, I I'm sure that there's a lot of this happening uh, where people, um, their, their knowledge of uh, past events comes from Hollywood. Now, um, the problem with um, the way Hollywood pre presents things is uh, entertainment always comes first. So um, they feel no obligation to stick to uh, the truth um, and they can play fast and loose with characters and the timeline and um, the historical um, background, um, what kind of um, life people were leading back then. Um, even if you watched a documentary about a historical event and you had two historians discussing it, I'm sure you'd get two uh, different points of view. Um, I've watched quite a bit of this about World War II and you'll get guys who are equally uh, renowned in their fields as historians and they will disagree as to uh, some of the events and some of the, particularly some of the motivation um, behind what happened. So uh, you, you can see it's uh, not an easy task to um, make a film that's set in a historical context and make it accurate and entertaining. Uh, but I, I do think they should um, not take too many liberties. Anyway, um, the book that covers this is Real History. The World According to the Movies by Alex von Tunzelman, who is both a historian and a film critic. And the book that she's written is um, very detailed, but it's also very, very funny. And that's one of the reasons why I, I really enjoyed reading it. Uh, covers a lot of the movies I've watched. Some of the, some movies I've, I've never watched and um, it, it's made me want to watch some of them. And um, it, it's um, certainly a, an interesting read. So the book is chronological. It covers movies that go from the earliest times, sort of um, the dawn of creation, you might say, right up to modern history. So, just to dip in, um, one book that covered the early times is One Million Years BC. Famous film in its time, um, notably for Raquel Welsh. And amongst the um, anachronistic things in it was um, the types of um, animals that were found that um, she said, you, you might expect a mammoth, a saber-toothed tiger. Instead, Ternak hears a roar and there looms before him a really big iguana. Finding genuine dinosaurs would be another casting challenge. But a really big iguana does not look like a dinosaur. It looks like a really big iguana. Or a normal-sized iguana chasing a tiny caveman. Things get even sillier a few minutes later when a really big tarantula shows up 
It is four times Cernic's height. The biggest true spider ever to walk the earth is the Goliath bird eater. It's still knocking around in South America. Then later on she writes, Ternak is one of the main characters obviously. Exhausted, Ternak collapses on a beach conveniently situated in the territory of the tribe of hot blonde women who wear fairy bikinis. These folks are more advanced than the rock tribe. In addition to two-piece swimwear, they have invented embroidery, conch shell trumpets, cave paintings, workshops, bouffants, false eyelashes, spear aerodynamics, laughing at foreigners, and the small-scale manufacture of boho costume jewellery. At one point a turnip is lifted triumphantly aloft. Presumably they must have foraged for it, rather than actually working out how to farm it, which would catapult them forward into the Neolithic. So, fast forward to the time of the Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille where she awards a history grade of C minus and she says the film won an Oscar for rising to the special effects challenges of religious rather than historical imagery most famously the pillar of fire and the parting of the Red Sea but there's disappointment in store when Ramesses refuses to listen to Moses's plea to let his people go and Egypt is visited by four plagues. The other six are only mentioned in passing because DeMille couldn't work out how to do frogs, flies, lice, boars, locusts, or the death of livestock. These days, of course, it would be easy. Just set up a camera outside the toilet block at the Glastonbury Festival. Then, Another um, movie is, um, let me just, Lissomania, which is um, the story of Franz Liszt, played by Roger Daltrey. Now, th this is directed by Ken Russell, and as far as I'm concerned, you don't have to say anything more. Ken Russell has ruined more film scripts than any other director I know. Um, I, I detest his work completely. So, um, the movie has Brahms, Wagner, Varia, and the, the language, it's more like a Guy Ritchie Cockney film. Um, what can you say? And there's some politics <laughs> Wagner gloats that his music will bring forth a man of iron to forge the shattered fragments of this century into a nation of steel he grows fangs, bites list on the neck sucks his blood then snogs his daughter Cosima the real Cosima list left her husband for Wagner although it didn't happen like this and nobody was a vampire Liszt and Caroline tried to get married, but the Pope was having none of it. The Pope is a little beardy bloke with a heavy Scouse accent. Good grief, the Pope is played by Ringo Starr. Since you can't marry Caroline, Liszt takes religious orders. Pope Ringo sends him to exercise Wagner. I wouldn't advise anyone to take that as serious history. Then we come to one of my favourite films, Zulu which is given an entertainment grade of B plus and a history grade of C plus. Now, the actual um, outline of the battle, famous battle, where a small British uh, outpost was attacked by a large force of Zulu, um, which happened just after the absolute um, route of Ishan Lawana, where the British were soundly defeated. Rourke Strip, which was a, a, a little outpost, 
um, they fought and um, prevailed. So obviously it makes a fantastic story. Uh, Stanley Baker, who is the star and also is one of the um, people behind the, the making of it, um, had a lot of influence in it. They did get a, an awful lot right, um, in my opinion and in the opinion of, of the author of this. But the, there are niggles. Um, the um, colour sergeant Frank Bourne uh, is portrayed by Nigel Green. Now Nigel Green was one of our premier character actors of the time and his work in movies like Hippocrates File and, and so on uh, was splendid and he, he um, tragically killed himself. Um, at a fairly early age but he could portray British officers and British senior NCOs and in this case colour sergeant perfectly um, tall imposing guy with a, a full moustache but the reality was uh, the sergeant was a diminutive skinny 24 year, 24 year old nicknamed the kid and similarly um, Private Henry Hook is played by James Booth, another good character actor, who was actually in line to play um, the Michael Caine role. Um, and he's portrayed as um, something of a drunken coward, uh, where actually he was a VC winner and uh, was a, a very good soldier. And his, um, his daughter um, walked out of the movie uh, the premiere of the movie um, so putting that on it and then of course the other big thing was the fact you know the movie shows the um, the soldiers being uh, from the Welsh regiment and singing Men of Harlock and so on but in fact they um, were actually um, not Welsh they were recruited from uh, mainly Warwickshire um, so that, that didn't happen uh, but a lot of a, a lot of very accurate things. Um, uh, Quechueo, the chief of the Zulu at the time, is played by the then current chief, and um, as far as I remember, still chief of the Zulu, Chief Butalazi, and uh, the Zulu tactics and so on um, were shown very very well. Uh, they, they were a formidable uh, fighting foe, the Zulu, and um, you know took. Um, successive Zulu wars before um, uh, the British Empire prevailed. Let's go to the next, next one we want to talk about. The next one is um, American Sniper, uh, Chris Kyle. Uh, a modern day war film and uh, uh, directed by Clint Eastwood who, who usually does a really good job um, the film um, is roughly based on the book, his book Chris Carl's book but um, there's a lot uh, to question in it and people have since the book and the film came out throwing up an awful lot of questions about the accuracy of quite a lot of um, the things that went on in the movie and um, it, to the point where it's almost a work of fiction. Uh, there are other um, war films mentioned, uh, it goes in, right into the Cold War. Um, Another one is The Imitation Game and I've actually, um, I, I did review this a while ago. The Imitation Game is based on uh, Brashley Park uh, and the work of Alan Turing and it, 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 it's got to be one of the worst uh, portrayals of what happened at uh, uh, Bletchley and of the life of Turing. I mean it just doesn't capture the the way that place was run or the wartime atmosphere at all. Um, 
and it, it just plays with with history in a way that is really fast and loose um, for example um, the um, the the couple of the um, top uh, crypt cryptologists are, are, are shown as being um, uh, almost enemies uh, having and uh, having a dispute and um, <clears throat> causing one of them to write a letter to Churchill um, complaining, well, actually, the letter was signed by all of the main um, cryptanalysts uh, and mathematicians that were there, <clears throat> and they all worked together um, very, very well. And also the, um, the way it was set up into different huts, and they didn't uh, communicate with each other. Uh, it was so secret. And this was taken very, very um, um, seriously. They didn't talk about hot matters outside the hut, never mind in the pub or in the presence of uh, soldiers loading a wagon, as you see in this, talking about the most top secret things there are. Uh, just a, a ridiculous um, distortion of, of events. So, um, if, like me, you, you enjoy movies and um, I, I've been entertained by a lot of them and uh, so, some, of, some of the films mentioned I, I did already know a little bit about the real history, particularly some of the wartime stuff, but a lot I didn't and uh, it's sometimes quite eye-opening to, um, to see just how much they uh, distort things and uh, I think Real history does a really good job and it's highly, highly entertaining.